I want to go on to issues of a more social nature now and talk to child and adolescent psychologist Claire Rowe, who joins me on the desk. Thanks for spectating on that little exchange, Claire. Um, interesting discussion with you today. We've been talking a lot about uh, Barry Humphreys and the way that he was cancelled. And you make the point to us that this humour and especially self-deprecation that he was so good at is kind of important for our health. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's... I think psychologists know it's very important to be able to laugh at yourself. And I think Barry Humphreys' humour, um, you know, was a, a kind maybe we're not going to see. I mean, I suppose you would sum it up by it's, it's irreverent, isn't it? It yeah. wasn't... I don't think it was disrespectful. It certainly wasn't mean humour laughing at someone. I mean, it was self-deprecating. Um, and I love one of the quotes going around from Dame Medda at the moment that was, you know, please don't judge Australia by Australians. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, I mean, you know, Barry Humphreys was like all good artists and his good friend Bill Leake. And, yeah. you know, society needs people like that to, to shine that mirror on us. And um, it's a way that we can kind of maybe challenge some, um, you know, institutions like the church or sexuality or we can can make commentary on society and it's funny because at the end of the day that's where we're all we're all thinking that it's very important this element of self-deprecation of course not every joke uh, has self-deprecation in it but it, it, when true comic geniuses like Barry Humphreys have a bit of that it's important because it allows us to understand that we're not perfect no one's perfect so we're not really on a pedestal pontificating which so many comics do now they do this politically correct stuff and they're telling everybody else that they're not morally uh, equivalent to the rest of us. And so um, it's not a real a good reflection of how the world really is. No, and I love that. I don't think there are any other comics, I can't think of any in the world, that have the position to be able to do that to the Queen and King of England. Yeah. <laughs> as, as well as, you know. And so he really did. Um, you know, no one was, was kind of spared from him, and, and that was exactly he, the point of it. He took everyone. Let's have a look at uh, what Barry Humphreys, as himself, had to say about political correctness. I'm really the sworn enemy of any form of political correctness. You can't call something what it really is. Things were much more liberal 20 years ago than they are today. Yeah, there he is. He's, uh, he's spot on there. And you're, you're taking on the royalty. And whenever you go onto these famous talk show sets, talking to people like Michael Parkinson and the like, he would just take them on and their guests. Yeah. Quite extraordinary. Yeah, he would completely take over and have, you know, everyone eating out the palm of his hand. And I just, yeah, I don't know whether we'll see the likes of him again or we have We need more of them for our own mental health, right? Absolutely. We do, do they make us paranoid, all these social commentators as, politi as, uh, as comedians? Do they make us all a little bit highly strung? I think so. I mean, I think the world has changed from when Barry Humphreys was at his peak. I mean, I do think we've become more um, hardened, more easily offended, but I have to say kind of angrier people. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's what we've lost. I think Barry Humphreys uh, sent us up because he knew we could take it in a certain well, era. Well, I showed one of these sort of ABC lefty comedians the other day and he's basically just pouring hate on anyone in the room who voted Liberal. Now, it's kind of funny for the lefties, but it's divisive and it is nasty and... Not everybody can sort of be on on that joke, can they? No, they can't. And, yeah. and I think, you know... Um, if it's you, a joke, you it's could, really just abuse. It's That's really just abuse. And I think he walked that fine line between mm. being, you know, and, and definitely stayed on the right side of being irreverent. No one was to spare. It wasn't political. Um, he didn't cross that line into disrespectful, just abuse, actually, that, that comics call now comedy. Now, we've gone over time on this topic as well, so I just want to ask you briefly. I, I noticed this study that, that the Murdoch Institute's doing in Melbourne, or well, based out of Melbourne, looking at post-COVID children, getting them from birth effectively and studying their lives. So, now, there'll obviously be a lot of physical stuff we can learn about uh, children, they're growing or whatever. But what, what, will there be a focus on mental and social development as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is great. I think they're, they're uh, calling out now, if you're in Victoria and having a baby, they're signing up babies and they're going to follow them right through life. So if you want quick results, this is not it. I think there'll be generations of yeah. researchers here. They will look at uh, the interplay between genetic environment, they're taking samples of saliva, breast milk, uh, and they're looking at physical health, allergies, uh, but mental health. And it really will be looking at that COVID generation um, and how it plays out into the future. It's like a scientific version of 7-Up, which is a fantastic documentary series, as you know. Thanks for joining us, Claire. I appreciate it. Thank you.